Morning all, let's have a look at a game of Hikaru Nakamura. So this is the key match in the fourth round between the United States of America and India. So the board won Nakamura playing Sasakiran. Krishna and Sasakiran are twenty seven oh seven. So both players over twenty seven hundred. Nakamura two seven seven eight at the time of this game. Okay, let's see what happened. E four from Naka, and then we see e5 after knight f3 knight c6 a little surprising now instead of the standard bishop b5 we see d4 an entry into the scotch game e takes knight takes knight f6 white now plays knight takes c6 and okay black's accepting the double pawns b takes c6 and now e5 and this pawn is often vulnerable later and it looks as though you know why would white want this advance pawn which is slightly weak and subject to attack well there are compensating factors and sometimes the pawn can be sacrificed and we're going to see in this game the pawn actually uh, sacrificed at some point uh, for, for some very strong dynamic potential so already the pawn is exposed to a frontal attack with queen e7 it's all theory though queen e2 Knight d5, c4, and knight b6. I think some players have sometimes played bishop a6 there, but knight b6 is also common, knight c3. And now bishop b7 has the idea that maybe black's interested in castling queenside. And it's a very neat looking plan, really, that uh, this bishop might be um, finchettoed as well, either with g6 or g5, because the queen's putting g5, and bishop g7. You have both bishops striking down the diagonals rather neatly and still e5 looking a little bit vulnerable okay for the moment bishop f4 adding some support for the e5 pawn and now both sides castle queen side and now we see this use of the queen on e7 with the immediate g5 gaining a tempo and now an aggressive move again h5 threatening to win the bishop so something has to be done about that h4 and now g4 and there's an idea that maybe later f3 is going to be useful this can be leveraged to kind of wrench open some files or maybe create a passed pawn maybe this diagonal would be useful if g takes and the bishop's still on f1 and it is blocked in at the moment so bishop on f1 is uh, is likely in this sort of position so king b1 here and black puts more pressure on that seemingly vulnerable e5 pawn, bishop g7. And now a, a nifty looking move is played here, which looks maybe sometimes, maybe some of you would think this is a little bit strange. Queen e3. And one of the ideas is that later the queen can come to b3. Uh, another idea it's putting pressure on this diagonal which might be annoying for black okay rook d e8 and again white is forced now it seems at the moment to protect that pawn so rook e1 and then we see c5 and it looks as though black has a harmonious position with every piece seemingly doing something useful here this bishop seems a bit passive protecting g2 and also of course c4 this knight okay the knight's kind of constrained though by this pawn uh, but what about black's pressure on e5 as well and the potential for black to undermine e5 further with either d6 or maybe in some cases f6 so white has to be very careful here he plays actually a4 playing on the fact that this knight is kind of restricted and Black doesn't really want to play a move like a5. So this does present some difficulties for black. Black does go for the e5 pawn now with d6. Okay. And in this position, a5 kicking the knight. d6 also, of course, made way for the knight to return back to d7 to add even more pressure to e5. So it does seem quite timely. Uh, response d6 here so a5 and now knight d7 and this is the point where you know maybe a lot of players with white are wary of this variation because of the e5 pawn but um b5 
There's dynamic compensation now generated through just sacking the pawn or counter-attacking. For the moment, white can counter-attack the a7 pawn, knight b5. OK. So after knight takes e5, technically white has the option of um, knight a7 here, but it might not be as strong as the game continuation. The game continuation was actually queen b3. In fact, let's just check this. Knight a7 might actually be losing. Let's just check the immediate knight takes a7 here. Yes, it seems to be better for black here. Just retreat here. Queen f6. It looks like a dangerous battery on b2. So say queen d2. Now knight c6 and black is looking better, a lot better, according to an engine here. If you look at this evaluation, it shows the dangers of winning that e5 pawn. This 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 battery, this diagonal. It looks as though black's position is quite beautiful. In fact, so queen b3, yeah, offers a lot more challenges for black, to say the least. Uh, black plays bishop a8, still offering. Um, a7 here, and it looks like a dangerous invitation actually. Knight a7. Why isn't knight a7 and say queen b5 uh, potentially dangerous? In the game, f4 was played, but let's have a look uh, at again knight a7 in this position. Knight a7, say king d8 is the move, might be the move to avoid too much trouble. Okay, and then we have f4 like the game. All right, so okay, that seems to be more playable in this position. But f4 has the idea that actually, okay, the knight's pinned to the queen. Doesn't seem too many options for that apart from g takes, and that does open up this diagonal now, h3 to c8 diagonal. Okay, and that's dangerous for the black king. So some forces are coordinating now on the black king. The knight does take on a7 now. King d8, avoiding bishop h3 being check for the moment. Now bishop takes e5, giving up the dark square bishop. Rook takes e5, check, and this is forcibly winning the exchange because of bishop h3. Where can the black king go? If it goes um, to e7, I think there'll be a lot of trouble after queen takes c7, to say the least. Um, let's just check this. It looks it looks like a disaster position, but you know black is threatening rook e1 and queen b2 mate. So let's just absolutely check this. Queen c7, queen b8, bring the king back. Okay. There's strong moves here. Knight c8 seems to be the strongest. With the idea, rook takes c8. Okay, this is not a problem, this rookie one, because it's check. It's not a problem, it will be check. There's no time for queen b2. So white's just clearly better here. Okay. So let's go back. So it seems, okay, white is the exchange up now very shortly. So he plays check and he wins that exchange. So what has black got for the exchange in compensation? Well, the knight's kind of looking stranded here. It's going to have to spend a few moves getting back. Maybe the queen can go back to b3 at some point and knight b5. But actually, the intention with queen b5, this queen b5 here, um, is, is to support knight c6, it seems, uh, at a timely moment from the evidence of the game. And to try and use this a pawn, I think that was the main idea. Rook hg1 was played. So giving the option for white of sac counter sacrificing the exchange to simplify the situation just to use this a pawn rook d8 and now now we see we see the forceful combination just to use the a pawn which um, maybe is a bit too simplistic it didn't quite work out cuz black turned out to have some very important resources here to fight the a pawn this was the critical moment where engines actually really like white and the key move from an engine point of view is actually to play rook g2 here just to go for the g-fold battery. For example, king f7, doubling up rooks. And 
this doesn't look that dangerous, does it? Because Black's kind of defending that. But um, there's a brilliant conception coming up here from engine point of view. Knight c6, let's say. Okay. Rook e8. <laughs> And an incredible idea to use the G file and the Queen's access to D7 and E8 now. Um, this this is engine level tactics. I can give you 10 seconds if you want to try and guess this. This is just an engine variation. Uh, 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, this is an amazing tactical idea. Knight E5 check it seems to be winning in all variations. Like Queen takes E5. Check Queen D eight threatening a lot of nasties and by keeping that menacing threat on you know Queen G eight and and Queen G six, it's winning winning that bishop, that seesawing, winning the bishop, and this will be much better for White. So there's that variation. So starting with this idea of doubling up rooks, this would be the way it seems for White to to, to get a good, huge advantage. Um, and in in that fascinating variation after Queen takes e5, if there was d takes e, we have rook g8 as a resource, threatening immediately Queen e8. If takes we have check, and we have this Queen e7, rook takes g8, forking both rooks. So it seems doubling the rooks on the G file was the way to go, but this is uh, this is just an engine line. This is a very very attractive idea from a human point of view, just to simplify forcefully to give back the exchange. So bishop takes c6, of course not queen c6, queen b2 mate. Give back the exchange and just use the a pawn. The problem is Black's next move um, creates counterplay, creates checking opportunities. Queen d4. This queen d3 now is a bit of a menace and harassment for the white king. So a6, as though it's only two steps away, looks promising, but check. And now queen d2, showing really that also there's access for a5 here uh, for perpetual check time. White plays queen e4, maybe still with the hope that a7 is 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 clear here uh, as an advantage or other things like. Um, Queen h7 are potentially dangerous uh, with the idea then maybe you know of rook g1 but uh, king d7 now the king's helping itself but uh, leaving it right to the last moment uh, to introduce another tactical resource to stop the a pawn so great credit to Indian number one grandmaster in this match well Anand wasn't playing for India though in this Olympiad so far but here, um, great credit, you know, rook a8. And from an engine point of view, black's okay here. This is equal. Let's turn on the evaluation. Zero. You can't allow this, like, perpetual check stuff. Um, and in this position, queen e6 is not so harmful as the game continuation. If we have this position, you know, we get a perpetual check again. And this this is getting a little bit even dangerous for white potentially. Okay, it's just perpetual check time. The king's not going to be able to escape the checks and doesn't want to lose b2. Okay, so basically um this should have been okay for black. Okay, Necker avoids rook a7 being checked. He plays king b1. So he's threatening queen a8. Potentially, but at the moment there's queen e1. The queen is tied down, so it's actually not even a threat. Uh, what is is potentially a threat though is taking on e6. And here, I know it looks absolutely simple. After in retrospect, everyone's uh, a brilliant player, especially with engines nowadays. But here, it seems uh, the simple move e5 would have solved much of Black's remaining problems, relying on the fact the Queen can't take the Rook because of the perpetual check lines. And if, say, f4, then just take, find, check, it's no big deal, uh, that that position. But so we have an unfortunate human tendency to create weaknesses of the last move. 
and we've gone over this concept many times on this channel weakness of the last move if you want to do a search on it it's a big theme rook takes a7 and the weakness of this last move is e8 is not covered here and this now means that there's different variations that have been created to before so queen e6 check forget about queen e4 or queen d5 there's now a forced mate based on the fact e8 is not defended queen e8 check and black has to resign if if here uh, king b6 there's queen b5 mate or king b7 doesn't help queen b5 check and again mating because of the rook now coming in so it's, it's a very tense game uh, situation um, the, the pawn structure sketch after after the scotch opening is that the e5 pawn uh, seems really quite shaky but here you know with black casting queen side um, and that the counterplay is natural to, to be directed at black's king and it was directed at black's king uh, with these methods of undermining like this so this diagonal uh, this file okay using b5 once c5 was played so we see that, that contour of, of white's counterplay here in this game, letting e5 go. So d6 at the right moment. It seems like a pretty powerful move. Did black have better? Was black actually slightly worse here? It seems a5 is, is given a look in here. a5 to simply stopping uh, white's intention. To say knight b5. There's a resource here, rook h6, an unusual looking resource. And it seems black slightly better, actually. A fascinating position, really. Um, so a5 is a pretty pretty uh, stubborn attempt to stop white's counterplay. But um, yeah, d6 is offering a knight retreat, but um, it didn't kind of work out too well in the game continuation. So white's able to generate some lines of attack here with this f4 is generating that h3 to c8 diagonal as a line of attack and that culminates in winning the exchange very shortly here so he's won the exchange and he may be a bit too quick to cash out to counter um, sacrifice the exchange to try and use this a pawn when in fact in this position it seems uh, rook g2 is loved by engines here as a big advantage in this position rook g2 a lot of clinical looking tactics after that but rook g2 we see a 1.56 on rook g2 this idea of the entry points of g8 and, and d7 and e8 here coming to life um, but uh, yeah this this is a natural plan as well it's just that white was not given time to queen the a pawn the harassment from the black queen and this resource, resourceful rook a8 um, so white in fact has to do king b1 there doesn't seem to be too many uh, choices here um, you know rook a7 will be checked so he has to avoid that and this is the key weakness of the last move blunder rook takes a7 maybe he was in time pressure it was move 37 if time controls at move 40 to gain extra time it's one of those weakness of the last moves near move 40 blunders in particular so when people are short of time so went it into straight into a forced mate okay um, comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much by the way the, the match result of this match was two all draw because Gatakamski managed to lose unfortunately for the United States perspective to Pentela Hare Krishna on board two, <clears throat> a 2685, and the other two games are drawn. Thanks very much.